Well, hi, good morning. Hey, thanks so much for joining me here for basically round two with this big old radio. Um, now, uh, yesterday evening I was watching TV and suddenly decided I've been watching too much TV. So I came in here and I gave the speaker a big, well, I don't know, treatment. Uh, you know, this speaker is totally shot um, in the way it was. Uh, it's probably still totally shot, in fact. And I'm not going to suggest for a minute that this has worked. I don't know if this has worked. But the uh, the original uh, paper cone, completely torn all the way around. There's really nothing connecting the center part of the cone to the outer edge. There's nothing at all holding the center part in the center anymore. And, you know, there's a voice coil attached to that that's going down into a pretty tight gap needs to be centered really well. Well, who knows? All I did was, uh, this is a coffee filter with the center cut out of it. I stuck it in there, painted on glue. I spent about, oh, I bet you it was uh, probably 45 minutes trying to get this to look something like a speaker cone and trying to get as much of the original cone material as possible stuck. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Okay, I think this is probably this is probably gonna haunt me later. But that's what I did yesterday evening. Uh, now, <clears throat> let me apologize for this camera you're looking through too. My one of my last videos almost ruined by this camera not focusing in a stable way. So I apologize for that. I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to either fix it. Goodness knows how to do that, or just get a new camera, which I think I'm more inclined to do. <clears throat> These cameras are not that expensive, and I, I beat them up pretty good in here. <clears throat> okay, so I think maybe the best thing to do next is to take a closer look at this radio, part by part. Again, looking for anything outrageous inside here. I mean, the speaker is the most outrageous thing I've found so far. Uh, there's, there's nothing really outrageous in here, but I want to know if there is. I want to know about it. Plus, I need to plan out and discover where all the capacitors are and maybe bad resistors and stuff like that. So I'm going to switch to this this camera here. I'll give it a little bit of a closer look in there, and we're just going to scan scan down through this thing from top to bottom carefully. There, I'm going to give you the the poor man's 3D view of this. So I'm looking at all the parts up in here. Oh, hello. Just, and see, this one's just hooked up to a loose wire, and that, you know, how does that happen? That doesn't make a lot of sense. I mean, this is not the way they make radios. Uh, so, so I don't know what that's about. Um, but really, really suggest this is a replaced capacitor. I mean, really? Sealed tight. How much you want to bet? It's not sealed tight. So yeah, look at this arrangement here. We got a, a capacitor with a what looks like a high wattage resistor back here. Look at that. They've been they were tied together and then installed. I mean, it's just maybe a convenient way of, of doing it, or there's some reason why this. I can't imagine what that would be. Uh, this is right near the output tubes. So the output tube up there. So the kinds of things you'd expect around here is a uh, bypass capacitor and cathode resistor. That's probably exactly what this is. And, and this bypass capacitor is fairly large, electrolytic one. It's, it's probably a dud. If if this guy gets weak, then the output of the of the uh, amplifier will be weakened. And if this guy he's got some cracks on the shell there, doesn't mean it's bad. But if it is, if this guy goes high goes high or low it will throw the bias off on the output tubes make your tubes run too hot okay we'll go down another level here uh, here's a nice coil nothing wrong there just looking across at everything coming through right to this control. This control only has two terminals connected. This is probably the tone control. 
And this is probably the tone capacitor here. <clears throat> I blew, I blew out, I vacuumed out all the dust out of here, but apparently I didn't get quite all of it. I see there's some up in here. see that right there old wire coming up and it's just laid up against this uh, sharp edge terminal post there uh, there's all kinds of potential for short circuits in here there's a bare wire with that insulated wire under it and the insulation is cracking right where they're crossing Uh, what that tells me is the more I fiddle around with this, the more likely I, I am to bend wires and the insulation is going to crack off and then and then that'll be a problem. Okay, let's go down another level here. So I'm looking in the back part here. Okay, so just some dust on there. See anything funny? Not, not actually, not a lot in this area. Oh, look at how that resistor's installed down there, right in there. What what what's catching my attention is there's no lead length on this resistor. It's tucked right in there. Yet, what is this? Okay, that's a wire going to a capacitor down here. Gen generally messy wiring in here. Right? It's kind of like a free-for-all. You know, some radios, when you look in it, you can tell some uh, tight-ass engineer was overseeing the building of the radio because you, you see this wire here. It's kind of done like that. Well, some radios that is, <clears throat> you know, perfectly straight, total right angle, perfectly straight. Uh, not this radio, that's for sure. Here, so that's an unusual part. That doesn't look very old, that part. So I, I'm trying to, to spot any replacements or anywhere work has been done. Yeah, this, this looks quite new. It's very suspicious to see that right next to this. You know, just a wild guess. There used to be one of these over here. Just a wild guess. This terminal strip, and it's a little hard to see, but in behind it here, there's a coil fixed in here. Looks like you can't adjust anything on it. So there's another coil over here. Uh, these are in these uh, the separate. Areas. Look, look, look how they built this. This is not coming up straight at all. It's coming up on an angle <laughs> and then bending a little bit this way. Straighten them up at the last minute. And it looks like this is trying to get past the socket here. This is really not a, uh, this is not, you know, it was not an artist who designed this radio, that's for sure. Okay, so way, way back in here. focus go. I guess I moved the camera a little bit and moved it away a little bit when I adjusted it there. I'm using fixed focus on the focus on the camera. So these these capacitors I'm inclined to leave alone. I've always found them to be good. I don't know if I've ever found a bad one. You can see the Canadian Marconi capacitor way in the back there. Now, these capacitors that are hidden way in the back, down under and behind, hard to get at. Sometimes when guys come through and do the capacitor replacement job on the radio like this, they leave those ones. I've done that. I've left capacitors that appeared to be okay but were really hard to get at, and I just left them. Well, that one says Marconi. Here's another one. Come to think of it, I didn't see this one. See, this guy's hiding back here. Another one looks the same type, Marconi type. 
but all these upper ones, like uh, th these ones here, they don't say Marconi. So, you know, could all these be replacements? That would be there. It's possible. It's quite possible. Um, let's take a closer look at one of them and see if we can figure out if somebody's redone it or not. Okay, I gotta refocus here and get a little closer look. Wow, that's a real eyeful, isn't it? Huh. Wow, there's a lot of stuff to look at there. Um, <clears throat> poker and a pointer. So let's start with this capacitor. Is this a replacement? Did somebody come in here and replace it? So I'm looking for you know too much wire around the post here because the old part had something different about how it's soldered. I don't know. Hard to say. I get a good good look at the edge of this kind of material here, how porous it really is. at the side of this capacitor. 110, is that is that actually a number of labeling on there? It's like that's a value? It says 40. Does it say 40? Does that say anything? I don't know. I've never seen numbers, never noticed numbers stamped on the side of a... So, you know, this looks old enough. Uh, these, these, these molded ones, I don't, I just... I don't know. Wow, they look like they're really in there. Why wouldn't Mr. Marconi use his own capacitors, though? Why, why is he using somebody else's capacitors? Obviously, he was making them here. Okay, can't really figure too much out there. Let's take a look from this angle. Oh, more and more parts showing up now. <clears throat> oh, look at that cracked wire there. High wattage resistor here. Looks good, though. Another looks like a mica capacitor. And these old resistors with the old style of uh, of uh, coloring, body and dot. So that would be green, black, black. What's that? That's five zero five zero zero five zero with no zeros. That's fifty. I think that's a 50 ohm resistor there. I see that wire right down on the uh, bottom here. Right, this one here, this twisted one. It's cracked too, look at that. And what is that? I think that's a heater wire. I think that's a heater power, power wire. Yikes. Now, my goal here is not to restore this radio to, you know, like new. That's not what I'm trying to do here. What I'm trying to do is, to some degree, the minimum uh, reasonable. The minimum reasonable. Look at those cracked wires down in there. This one, this one here, this is uh, got an unusual split running along it. Usually they, they split around the radius. They crack around the radius. And, uh, how come this one's so furry? Um, one of the reason this one, and, you know, just ignoring this little drop of solder. Whoops, there it goes. There's quite a few drops of solder in here. Wow, it's lots of them. So what's that tell you? Uh, you know, unless that's original from the original builder of the radio, uh, that's uh, solder dripped by a repair person. Then. Yeah, so the reason this wire might be so fuzzy is because it's carrying a high voltage and it's literally attracted the dust. Uh, some radios, you can look in the back and you can spot the high voltage wires because they're, well, they're usually red, but also they're covered with uh, uh, dust more so than any other wires. Yeah, I want to get 
get in here and fool all around. It's interesting that the cloth covered wires seem to stand up better than these ones. Listen to that. Sounds as hard as can be. A little different. Look at these red ones over here, they're all wow. The more I look, the more I see more and more problems with the look at this thing split here. If you want a big long split like that, it meets up with a couple of these radio cracks. The whole chunks of insulation can fall off. And uh, you know, without anybody doing anything. I did put power on this thing, didn't I? <laughs> Wow. So she's not the healthiest. I'll take a look at that, that copper pipe in a minute here. But right down to the bottom corner of the radio now. So here's a big blue seal. <laughs> it's blue. Sealed? Who knows? Now this really looks like a replacement, doesn't it? I mean, this is screaming out. I'm new here. And what is it? What, what is that capacitor? Uh, this is a ground terminal here. And it's connected. Um, you know what? This is probably... Uh, how many, how many uh, MFD is that? Say 20? 20, looks like 20 MFD. Some number of working volts. So I think this is one of the filter capacitors. Hey, one of the things I didn't say here, and I should have said right off the bat, about the speaker is, uh, let's just, let me just swing the cord over here for a second. Here, here, I made a little mistake yesterday when I was examining the radio. Something that was a little bit curious in my head. Look, four prongs on the speaker four wires on the speaker. So what that hints at when you see that many wires is that there's actually, this is not a permanent magnet speaker. Let's take a look at this right now. Small diversion here. In fact, let, let me change cameras just to make this a little easier. So I looked at this the other day, you know, from looking at, at this, I couldn't really tell if that's a coil. I mean, it's square, right? So <laughs> square doesn't yell out coil. And here where it says ohms, and then down here, I'm sure it says PM. Yeah, I swear that says PM. It focused there for a moment, didn't it? Thank you, camera. PM, permanent magnet. Why, why they would write PM, permanent magnet, where they want to put the ohms amount, I don't know. Doesn't da 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 da. <laughs> Fort Wayne, Indiana. But the fact is, this is a coil in here. There is no permanent magnet. I was fooled. So the point, the reason I'm dwelling on this right at this moment is while well, we're looking for filter capacitors, you remember I did look for a filter capacitor up on top, a big can, I couldn't see it. And that hints that there's a field coil. Oh my gosh. Well, okay, uh, <laughs> yeah, okay, right, <laughs> is there some like combination, field coil, permanent coil, has this thing become magnetized, can I see wires going right into this? Okay, so it's really hard to see. The wires come here, they loop around, they hit this way. Well, I only see three. What am I, crazy? Four. One. What's going on? Be one hidden from view in here. Again, I don't want to be poking around too much with this. 
I don't know how to figure that out. I see four here, looks like four here, looks like three there, one disappeared somewhere in this bundle. How the heck does that happen? It does happen. It does happen. This this wire is tied to the frame right here. What's it all about? I don't know. I don't know. Boy, I'm really... <laughs> I don't know. Let's carry on. I had the schematic, by the way, which I... I that's something else we need to look at. The schematic will reveal the truth. Um, okay, so we were down in this corner. We're going to come up in here. We haven't, we haven't looked this part over yet. So let's get back to that. Super close up now. Hang on a second. Hold on there. Okay, that should be good. What a schmozzle in here. Uh, let's start with the copper wrapped wire bundle. Look at the way they've done this. It's, and now this is really clumsy. It's not. It's not soldered. I can move the uh, pipe relative to the chassis. It's not. It's not soldered there. They, they soldered. They tried to solder at every opportunity they got. What a mess. Yeah, there's something else we need to talk about. Hey. Nice try, but no cigar. So they managed to get it grounded out here in the middle, but not on these ends. Almost certainly what's in here is some wires traveling the length of the radio here ending up at the volume control it's pretty pretty sure that that's the volume control feels pretty gummed up in there see like this big capacitor here yellow, the yellowy one where it's connected you can see that it's been is that so yeah it looks like it's one of my styles here they've soldered the new capacitor into the this lead tail sticking out rather than try to solder to the chassis it's so hard to solder to the chassis somebody's definitely gone through here and done some capacitor work and more and more I'm thinking these are all replacements. Okay, what's that little bumble of solder there? Uh, what is going on with this one that the So this this cover has slid downwards. Now when the radio's in its regular position, this is downwards, slightly downwards. It's on quite an angle. It's just going to slide over time, or does that tell you something happened to this capacitor? I don't know. Maybe the guy was putting it in, he was working it around, and he slid the thing. I don't know. Who knows? I don't think it means anything. I'm just looking for anything here, any hint. Any like uh, like why is there solder here? There's nothing soldered to it. Why is it here? No answer comes the reply. Okay, something else we need to look at now is the little tiny battery over here.
has a, a clip on it. If you release the clip, the little copper battery will pop out of here. Let's pop it out and take a look at it. Maybe, maybe even just, I don't want to bend this thing. This is a spring clip. I just want to kind of release it a bit here. Am I going to break something? Pull it on that? I better do it by hand. When you do things by hand, you know, you feel, you really feel the strain and stress. When you use tools, you know, the leverage effect can fool you. You're strong like bull, but don't know it. Oh, wow, this whole piece feels like it's ready to break, break off. Is it worth getting this out of there? What are we getting it out of there for? Come on. Out you come. Fall out. Okay, I got it. I got it. There it is. So I, I imagine the radio repair shops had these as a piece of their stock. And it's basically a carbon button. This is my understanding of it, okay? I may not have this right. But if I don't have it right, I'm close anyway. The carbon, carbon center part, the black part. Around the outside is an insulation of some sort. Um, not perfect insulation, something like cloth. Doesn't look like cloth, does it? it? Looks like looks like some kind of rubber. Don't know what it is exactly. A little bit of moisture in that material between the shell, which is probably uh, made of uh, I don't know zinc, maybe, maybe. Doesn't feel like it. Zinc, zinc would be all white and rusty. I don't know some other metal anyway. It, Two kinds of metal with an electrolyte in between. You got a battery. This thing produces carbons at one end of the electromotive force, down towards one end, and uh, metals at the other end. You get a voltage between those two. Believe it? I don't know. Let's find out. Let's find out. Uh, and there might be a voltage there, but you can't draw much current off it before you will basically release the pressure. Um, uh, there's uh, not much, not much oomph behind it. Just looking for my, uh, hey, where are my test leads? What goes on here? Come on, lose track of everything. Okay, <laughs> we'll use, a, use an older meter. For some reason I found that humorous. Put it on the 1.5 volt scale there. So it's a little bit sensitive. What do you think we're going to get? Okay, so my impression is absolutely nothing. Isn't that a line from a song? They will now take this into my chemistry lab. They will apply a secret uh, fluid H2O to the top of this. That's my secret chemistry lab. So now a tiny amount of moisture is going to be between the carbon and the metal there. Okay, ready for this? Drum roll. Oop, wrong way. Da 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 da. There we go. So it's producing about a volt now. I think probably the way this works is uh, they, they have literally moisture inside here and then they try to seal it off with some kind of rubber seal around the outer edge. That's probably what you could see uh, protruding. It's all dried up and cracked away and of course any moisture down in here is, has leaked out. So one way to kind of get this guy back in shape is put him under water and just let him soak there for a couple days. 
the thing is it's not going to last long before it gives up the ghost again and what's it doing it's putting bias on a tube grid um, small bias but a volt without it with the improperly uh, biased grid probably going to get some audio some bad audio effects so we'll just leave this laying here for a while and I'll test it again in a few minutes now often where there's one there's more than one I'm kind of surprised I've only come across one so far. Okay, let's go back to the close-up. Close-up camera here. Click the right button. There we go. Okay, so now you can kind of see in the shell, you can get a whole idea how these things are. Surprising, eh? That would be a battery inside a radio like this. But uh, guess what's in your cell phone? Guess what's in your in your almost everything? There's little batteries inside your computer there's a, a battery you know it's well it's not it's not a carbon button battery but it is something else sitting in there quietly doing its thing for uh, for for years and years and years if if in the end we really want to get away from this there's a couple things that can be done one is you just short this out and give up on proper tube bias Maybe not the best approach. Another way is to shove, I've done this, is shove a modern battery in here. Uh, if, in some cases, you can get a, a regular uh, watch type battery to sit on this or in this and be fixed in place if you're lucky. So there's a couple ways around that. Then the other one is, you know, stick some water on this and be happy it lasts however long it lasts before you have to wet it down. Maybe you gotta install some little water pipe and every six months drip some water down the pipe into the back of your radio. Okay, enough of that. Let's there's a hidden resistor up there. Okay, moving along across the bottom here more badly cracked wire. Look at that, right right look at that. Right Why? That's a red wire. Red wires are often B plus wires. Here's a white wire. Look at it's just airborne here. So if somebody's done something down here, this white wire is added in to extend the red one. Why why? Why why would you need to extend this red wire? Because you cut it off, cut it short? can guess when the last person worked on this radio none of these wires were cracked the way they are oh, there's another high resistance uh, or high wattage uh, resistor here looks good though looks don't mean anything but switch here. That, that's crappy, eh? Look at it, it's just wow. Oh, you can see the contacts uh, right right the no, right down here inside you can see the Pretty sure the power cord's been replaced here. Notice the friction tape. That's a very, very common thing you find in these older radios. Friction tape we used a lot. It all dries out too. Okay, so I think we've toured the whole thing. Um,
concentrating, that's why I'm quiet. Just a lot of bare wires in this thing, too. Which means when I'm poking around here, if I move some of these wires, I might in, uh, introduce a short. Because they're bare. Oh, look in there again. like a lot of parts need to be changed out and that's what it looks like to me. That's the impression I get. So uh, what order to do this in? Um, I want to find out fairly early what's going on with this speaker. So maybe what I should do is I replace the power supply filter capacitors first. That's all for now. Run the set, see what we get. Um, why, why even bother uh, replacing these? I just run the set now and see what the speaker does. I could, but you know, if I'm if I'm not going to change these, then I'm not fixing this radio. These got to go sooner or later. Might as well make it sooner. They're in the uh, power supply. You know, there's likely to be a hum in here. The speaker probably couldn't reproduce it last time around. Let's see what our little battery's doing here. You know, may maybe there's some tricks for getting water in there and then, then resealing this. Maybe you can reseal this with a little bit. Yeah, you probably could. Just get some uh, silicone, just reseal it after you get some water inside. Maybe you get five years out of it then. Hey, yeah, a little piece of speaker cone. <laughs> That's the missing piece. There it is. Uh, let's read this guy again. Is he still good? Sure. Sure. The actual reading on the meter there is... Well, it's on the 1.5 scale, so you can see for yourself. It's about a volt. About 0 0.9. 0 0.9 volts. So I'm gonna, I think I'm going to dunk this in water and leave it uh, for now. No reason why it has to be in there right now. And we'll change out these two, give the radio a try. Oh boy, do, do I have replacements for these? Oh man, 20. I think that says 20. You know what? You know what we got to do? We got to look at the schematic. That's where we got to go next, next to the schematic. Let me get it up on the screen here. Okay, just before we look at the uh, schematic, there is another thing. It's just about as curious as what's on this, uh, the PM on the speaker. There's something even more curious back here. Let me just get the close-up camera on it so you can read it. I caught, this caught my attention on the first video. I didn't say anything, I don't think. Probably caught some of your attention too. So, in this very nice, nameplate here. Manufactured Canadian Marconi under patents. Canadian patents. Marconi Canada. Model 93. Serial number. Battery operated receiver. What? What? Battery operated receiver? Battery operated receiver? <laughs> How many times can I say that? Ah, uh, really? Um, it's got a big plug on it, and I plugged it in the wall. <laughs> so, ah, uh, okay. Let's jump to the schematic here now. Okay, so lots of mysteries. So first of all, all these. I'm going to read all the notes. I hadn't looked at this before, so I'm going to read all these notes. Let's make this even bigger here. There we go. Intermediate frequency is not 455, it's 462. There's the speaker. Is there a field coil? Well, 
loudspeaker socket bottom view, loudspeaker top view. Well, we have to work away from the power supply. Oh, the power supply vibrator unit used on models 93. Vibrator socket. Oh my god, there's vibrators in this radio? <sighs> Come on, really? No, 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 no. This is crazy. My radio plugs in the wall. Okay, so this must, I must have radio 93 plus or something. Maybe there's a hint in here. Keep reading the notes. Keep reading the notes. Don't, don't, get, don't get in too deep too quick. Front view wave change switch positions, switch is shown in short wave position. Bottom view of coils. That can be quite helpful. Uh, okay, not sure what all that is. Yeah, by the way, I got this from uh, Radio Museum, uh, which I am a member. Bottom view of supply socket. Prong view of supply plug. So this looks to me like what they're saying here is this is a separate unit. So where so where's the batteries? If this is being powered from a battery. Used on models 93 and 94. there it looks like it's got a plus sign on it so it's electrolytic there's another one there C24 you know what they don't have the values on here I'm gonna have to download the uh, parts list to get the values for all this stuff uh, well What are the chances that there are two vibrators in this radio? You know what? There are two cans in this radio that we got to take a look at. I've never come across. But then why would it have an outlet? Why, why, like, why would it have a plug? What is going on? And then where's the big, big transformer? Okay, the big power transformer. So there's an audio transformer. There's the one on the speaker itself. There's a whole bunch of stuff in here. But in this radio, there's a great big power transformer. You know, there's more to this story. Uh, there's something more going on here. I don't have the uh, correct story. Now look at these tubes, too. I noticed this when I downloaded this schematic. I almost freaked out. Look at this tube. Tube number 15. I've never heard of that. 6A8 was uh, only popular for a short while. Another 15. I've never heard of that. <laughs> 6Q7, I'm not sure I've heard of that. 6C5, not sure about that one either. And then here's the number 19. What's going on in this tube? Number 19. Looks like two triodes uh, almost certainly hooked up in a push-pull arrangement here for this speaker. It's like a two tubes in one. RVC RVC 19 RVC radio vacuum can radio RF R -V -V. I don't know what that is okay uh, some stuff here I gotta learn that's one of the things I really enjoy about doing this work I've done hundreds of radios and here I am looking at a schematic loaded with stuff I don't recognize that I have to think hard about that's what I love about this stuff doesn't matter how long you've been doing it. Confusion is always at the ready. Yeah. How's this going to help me? So I got to get the parts list so I know the part size. I got to look back at the radio and figure out is there are vibrators in this radio? Where is the big power transformer? How come there's no plug shown here? Hey, look, six volts. There you are, six volts. 
it would run this thing off of a six volt battery it would have to be uh, like a big a big carb type battery to provide power sufficiently long I don't get it what are all these arrows here they're all they're all just indicating connection to the chassis I'm sure that's all that is So that, that's something worth noticing. There is a lot of chassis connections, so the chassis plays a big role in this radio. Okay, so the wires in the copper tube should be this one here, I think. I'm looking for any indication of shielding. Sometimes they put a symbol around the wire that's shielded. Here it is. It's over here. This is the volume. This is the tone. This is the volume. There's the shielding. See, it probably goes to a grid. Yeah, it goes right on the grid here. Look at this busy tube. Three plates inside it. This is, clearly this is the detector tube. Now, would, would, would this radio use an automatic volume control? a big capacitor here. It's R7, so this isn't isn't grounded hard on the volume control. The upper side should be the where the audio signal is coming in from a plate. Yeah, see these two little plates? Yeah, they're actually just connected together to this one wire, so it's really acting like one plate. So that's the rectifier output from here, or the uh, diode detector, whatever you want to call it. Audio gets fed into the top of the volume control, part gets picked off, confusingly enough fed back into the same tube to use its triode amplifier, and then it's on its way to what? on its way to this. This is another preamp, I guess. It comes out of here. Yeah, it comes out of here, makes its way to the grid. This guy pumps out a signal into this transformer. The transformer on this side is designed for push-pull. There it is, hooked up. Bingo. There we go. I think I'm getting it here. Let's go back further. So, we go back into all these coils. So this is a uh, tuned IF coil here. It's actually, there's the plate wire there. So it's actually carrying the plate current through here. Signal transformed to here, fed almost certainly to the grid. Yep. Nothing unusual about any of that, except this, this big capacitor here with no number. What? It's got no number. Oh, that's the battery. That's the battery. That's right, what am I saying, capacitor? That's the battery showing you the negative side is pushing down, if you like, on the grid here. So biasing the grid in this tube, but it's also biasing, can we make it all the way through here? Oh my gosh, we get into the switch here. <laughs> uh, the other side, oh, 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 we're onto a plate. Okay, that didn't quite go where I thought it was gonna go. So going back to the question of AVC, it's an important question. We go back to the detector. The AVC voltage is going to build on this wire here, this green wire. Okay, the DC that's building up can get all the way here. Could uh, I guess it can be added into this battery voltage. So ABC is zero, you just have this. Maybe that's what's happening. There certainly is a connection through here. We don't know how big these resistors are. This is probably a whopper. Uh, not for wattage, but for uh, resistance. Now, let me wait, look at the antenna for a minute here. Front view, weight change of coils for tuning the antenna system. What's 
what's that say? Short wave one, short wave two. So you're even switching these coils at the very front end when you're switching bands. Gives me the hint it's looking for a fairly specific antenna. That says A and G. G goes right to the chassis. A. A, A, let's see, A does a couple things. A goes through these coils and into the chassis. So basically the antenna is connected to a bunch of coils and goes to ground. Except there is one lead here, capacitor to the grid. So there's, there's a lead through here. That's nah, complicated. What can I tell you? Complicated deal there. Couple lights. Push button. Hey, now this is interesting. Push button. Because the uh, number 47, it's a. Uh, so these lights only come on when you push this button. That's not true in this radio. The lights are on all the time. But you know what? This button hole exists in this radio. We're going to look for that. The button hole. And what's this crazy thing? Looks like the kind of thing you would switch to switch from battery to AC. Am I, am I blind? Is there an AC plug hanging here? I don't see anything like it. I don't see any power transformer except for this thing. Wow, okay, so let's go look for that hole. look for the hole. Oh, well, we can't find the hole there. The hole's on the cabinet here. Now, this is just getting stranger all the time. Man, this, this cabinet weighs as much as some other radios weigh. Over here, and down there. You see? That's a hole. That's a hole right through. You would have something sticking out here. strange, eh? Why would they put it on the side like that? It'd be sticking out of the side that would interfere with, you know, putting this on the shelf or, you know, like you don't really want things sticking out of the side of your radio. Why wouldn't they put it on the front? Once again, no answer to my question. And it's missing. So the hole's there. The switch is missing. Okay, so what are the chances this thing went through a modification? Well, that's another thing we need to look at is uh, just how tough is it going to be to stabilize this. So now, we're, how, how hard is it to get tools onto the nuts? <laughs> so that's easy. The one above it, it's, it's interfered with all over the place. You see, like they, they're going to put the uh, capacitor in without all this stuff. So they can get their tools in here, then they're going to load it up with all these parts. Good luck. You know what I might need to do here? And just simply tighten down those nuts. Where's this? So there's another one back in here. Where's nut number four? Should be should be in this hole, but they haven't put it in there. They've used the hole for parts. Put that three three nuts, you know, and just tighten them down. Is probably the way to go here. You want to avoid getting into a terrible, terrible schmozzle. Trying to do something more with them. Here, one of these has to work. There we are. Can't tighten that one. I notice the screw head is poking through here as if the nut is set down. And this one here, the nut is clearly up. 
And you know what else? Under this one, I gotta show you this on the close up here. Because th this could be a factor in the operation of this radio. Let's see if we can get our bearings here. Okay, so you can see the nut moving there a little bit. Let me get this. Okay, how about a little focus now? Focus. One of the things I have the hardest time with, and not with the camera, with me. I'm sure if I went through school today, I would be picked off as an ADD or ADHD kid. Um, then they would have gave me drugs and took away my personality. Wouldn't that be terrible? There's great advantages to being an ADD person, you know that. So, a huge amount of play there, but can you tell? Still a little hard to see. That this wire here goes to a lug that's underneath there. Okay, you can, now when you look right at the nut, you can see the play. And you know what? It's really like that one is loose and the rest are not. So all I gotta do is get my somewhat fat tool down in there. Not gonna happen. Okay, I'm gonna have to. What's up on the top? Is it a screw? Up on the top here. What's up on the top? like it's probably a threaded shaft. Yeah, that's the one that doesn't exist. How about a little bit of light? seeing any screw head or something I can turn so I'm pretty sure it's just a threaded shaft sticking down from the bottom of the capacitor frame I was laughing because because this happened you see my clamp here that's just a weight to kind of balance my uh, my camera arm stuck on the speaker. That's what I was chuckling about. Once again, more proof that there's quite the magnet in there. Where are we at here? Well, we're going to try to tighten that up. If I tighten that up, that's a good, good day's work. <laughs> right there. Now there's some very fine wires going to this coil. could with a little bit of effort break them. There's a capacitor right there. Oh yeah, it's as loose as can be. There's a capacitor uh, right here I plan to replace. Maybe we're gonna speed that process up. That's a tricky one. The one lead goes way up in here. The other lead into this ground schmozzle. Okay, so what I can do is I can cut the ground lead off. I'm sure to replace this guy anyway. That's him. I cut his lead. And then I can swing him out of the way by leaving connected on the other end. I said I could swing him out of the way. You know what? I can't swing this out of the way. Uh, I'm a little anxious about cutting it right out and then coming in here tomorrow and forgetting about it and everything. Okay, so I just move it out of the side there. Now you'll have to leave it like that. Go back to just trying to brute force tighten this thing. 
Wow, that feels really tight already. Huh? <coughs> so come. It certainly isn't. This was as loose as could be before. What, what happened? Oh my gosh. Yeah, that, was, that snap of the pliers, that can really... Oh my gosh, it's just gone tight. This one's down tighter than this one, so it's got room to go. There's just no way I can get my uh, proper tool in there. I'd have to release this, but wow, this is soldered right in. I'm not, I'm not doing that. Oh, did I just break the wire there? Huh. Come on. Check this out. I can't believe it. Oh my gosh. I have to check this out myself. Let's get the focus really tight here. Looking at this coil right here, which I bumped, and when I bumped it, it looked to me I'm watching this little wire here that little wire appears to not be soldered um, you know how can that be uh, let's see if I can move it a little bit here this angle here and you'll see what I'm seeing. A more focus here. Okay. Now you can see the lead wire come from this coil. See it, see it move? Look it. I'm right. So either I just broke that, and it may not be on camera because I may have had to edit that little bit out. It shoved the tool up in here and pressed on this wire. And then I, I immediately saw what was happening, but then I noticed the wire seems to be completely loose. I did not push hard on it at all. What about the other wire? Oh my gosh. Come on, really? Uh, maybe connect it around the back here. That one seems to be connected onto this terminal. Now this one? Not so much. Wow. There's the rest of it there, I think. Way at the back there. Is this just a, is this, is this a coil or it must be, just be a coil? If it was a transformer, it'd have four leads. There'd be four terminals, just two terminals. Yeah, this, this wire has nothing to do with it. That's the capacitor wire I, I, I cut. No end. There's no end. I don't want, you can see that nut down there now pretty clear. That's what I'm trying to tighten. Since that wire's already broken off, I don't have to worry so much about it. I didn't even put pressure on it yet. This is really the wrong tool. I'm trying to do the wrong thing. Wow. That was with a lot of strain. So I'm just hoping to tighten these nuts down. Hey, let's tighten that little one more. Tighten down these nuts. You know what? That's the end of the run right there. It doesn't get any tighter. These are made with these grommets in mind. 
you know, I can't I can't get this much. See, this is what I was doing here. See, right there. So that's when I probably broke the wire right at that moment. Or did I just discover the wire was broken? Oh, I'm turning it a bit. But you know what? I'm not going to... Oh, I'm pushing on this. Phew. That's when accidents happen. Uh, you need, was it four factors to make an accident? I can't remember this now. It's been a little too long. One of them is energy. You can't have an accident without energy. It could be energy of motion. It could be heat. It could be chemical energy. It could be some kind of energy anyway. You can't have an accident without it. But there's four factors. I think you need all four operating to have an accident. So what, what that, just to finish off my thought there, when anytime you're pushing hard on something, squeezing hard, any anything you're using your muscle power hard, you're you got one of the accident factors in place. Could be accident to you personally, could be accident to the stuff you're working on, who knows? It doesn't necessarily mean it's a personal accident. Okay. The plan here. I don't know what the plan is. Um, I could take those nuts off, washer them up, leave the grommets there. Once I get the nuts off, it shouldn't be too hard to change the grommets. I don't have this style of, of, of grommet. I don't have anything that would insulate the uh, bolt going through the chassis. I don't have that style. So it's better to leave these in there if I can and just utilize what's left of them. Like just washer it up, get the pressure, and, and uh, get this more steady. It's already a little more steady. Okay, I think that's it for for now. Uh, yes, that's it for me for now. Hey, thanks so much for watching all this, and uh, I'll catch you on the next uh, video. Hopefully, then we'll get this thing. We'll get a few parts changed, get it plugged in, get it playing. Huh. Too much. I just found too much stuff today. <laughs>